Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 13 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to do 3D graphics and 3D animations in Python. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of black coffee. That is straight up black coffee, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. That's your go juice. Go get you some. What I'm also going to need you to do is fire up your most excellent Visual Studio code. And as you are doing that, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys that are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to do today. And what we're going to do is we are going to look at the solution to the homework which I assigned in lesson number 12, and that was to create a rotating vector that would rotate through the XY plane all the way around, and then would rotate through the XZ plane all the way around, and then would rotate through the YZ plane all the way around. How many of you were successful in doing this? If you were successful, leave a comment down below saying, I am legend, and you might give the double chest bump, or leave a comment down below that you fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair, okay? How many of you guys were successful, and how many folded up like a lawn chair? Actually, it's okay to fold up like a cheap lawn chair. I would rather have someone try and fail than never try at all, because guys, when you watch me code, it looks really easy, but you don't realize how, that you don't realize you don't know what you're doing until you try to do it by yourself where you're not just copying me. So you learn a lot more if you really try to do it on your own and then when you get absolutely positively stuck, come over and watch me. Okay, so let's uh, come on over here and stop all this useless introductory nonsense and we are going to come over here and we are going to work in the most excellent vpython folder. We will create a new uh, a new program called 3, 3D Rotate, like that, 3D Rotate.py. The .py is kind of important. And boom, you've got a fresh new Python program just waiting for you to write it. So we will now come over, get this out of your way. I will get my gargantuan noggin out of your way. I know you guys don't hate anything. What you hate more than anything else is when I leave, uh, I leave my head in front of what I'm typing. Okay, so if we're going to do this, we are going to need what? We are going to need our friend Mr. VPython. So we're going to say from VPython M import star, which means import everything. Also, who's your friend? Mr. NumPy. So we are going to import NumPy as NP, and then we're going to fight with it where it keeps trying to make the NP NumPy. All right. Now we have our two friends, Mr. VPython and Mr. NumPy. And now what we're going to do is create our, our coordinate axis. So we are going to need an arrow in the X direction, an arrow in the Y direction, and an arrow in the Z direction. But I'm going to use parametric design. I'm going to be good. So I am going to see, say that my arrow length is going to be equal to 2. And then I'm going to say my arrow thickness is equal to, I think, like 0.02, let's say. We'll look at this and see if it looks good. And then I'm going to have my, uh, uh, I'm going to have my pointer thickness will be a little thicker. I will make that 0.04, and we can come back and change these later. The thing that I'm spinning around, the vector I'm spinning around, I want to be a little fatter than my coordinate axes. Now let's create our X arrow. That will be the X coordinate axis, and that will be a what? It will be an arrow, and it will be along what axis? It will be along the one comma zero comma zero. So that's X, Y, Z, X is one, Y is zero, and Z is zero. <clears throat> so I've got my axis 
I will go color equal color dot red. I always think X, Y, Z. I always think red, green, blue. And so if I make X red, Y green, and Z blue, it always kind of lets me stay oriented when I'm looking at it. Okay, and my head is in your way, so you're going to yell at me. Okay, and then uh, <clears throat> and then we need to set a length after we set our axis, and the length is going to be uh, arrow length, arrow length, and it already guesses it. Okay, and then my shaft, I hope it's shaft width, shaft width is equal to, what did I call that? arrow T and guys I'm not like obsessive compulsive and have no short-term memory it's just I always like to make sure before I put it in because it's easier to put it in right the first time than it is to go back and try to find your arrow so let's copy this and then let's paste it and then paste it and then we'll go in and tweak it so this will then be the next one will be the Y arrow and that would be at the zero, one, zero, and the color will be red, green, and then those other things should be okay. And then the Z arrow, this will be Z arrow is going to be zero for X, zero for Y, and Z will be one. And the color will be color dot blue and then all the rest of those things should be the same so let's go ahead and take a look at that so I'm gonna run that and we have an error right off the bat what is this nonsense axis not defined uh, oh yeah you know that's equal to vector Hopefully you saw that. You know, what it is, is this is a newer version of vPython, and I'm still doing it according to the old way of doing it. Old habits or hard to break. Okay, so I make the axis equal to a vector. And now let's hope those things work, all right? Boom! We have a 3D coordinate axis. X, Y, and Z is coming out of the page. Okay, so much for that. Now we need to create the pointer that we're going to spin around. So I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that, oh, that is annoying. Give me a new line, you aggravating thing. Okay, I'll call this my point, my point, uh, I'll call it my P my p arrow for pointing arrow i just like to make my variables as conform conforming to each other as possible and so i'm just going to go ahead and snag this one which one would be the best one i want it starting out at the x-axis so i'll snag this one because i want it starting on top of the x-axis and that should do that and this will be orange Okay, and then this one we wanted to be thicker, right? So it's the pointer thickness here. We want that to be the shaft with pointer thickness. And so this will be P and T, right? That is, I need to make sure you see where I am. That is my pointer arrow is going to have a shaft with a pointer thickness. And it should be the same length. So we should just see that orange on top of my red axis here. If I'm thinking about this right, let's take a quick look. Boom, that looks good. Okay, and I need to now create a while loop. So while true, when is true, true, true is always true. So whatever we do, it's going to do it over and over. So now I need a for loop. So I'm going to say for. And I'm going to say my angle 
and it is going to go, my angle is going to go from zero all the way to what? To pi. So my angle is going to, for my angle in, who's your friend? Mr. NumPy dot lens space. And that allows us to just simply say, where do we want to start? I want to start at an angle of zero. And then how far do I want to go? I want to go to two pi. So I'm going to say two times np dot pi. np dot pi will return 3.14159264. And then I want to go a thousand steps. All right. So I'm going to start at an angle of an angle of zero. I'm going to go to an angle of two pi. I'm going to take a thousand steps. I need a colon. All right. Now, what am I changing? I am changing the p arrow and I'm changing the p arrow dot axis and I'm changing that to vector. All right. So I'm going to need an X, a Y and a Z. But as I am spinning around this, we learned last time. OK, what I need to be giving it is a point, an X value and a Y value. And my length is L. So what I see is, is that the X value is L cosine theta and the Y value is L sine theta. So I need to do that with my variables over here. And my length is arrow length. So instead of L, I will say arrow length times the x value was cosine so that would be np dot cosine np dot cosine of what my angle all right and then i'm going to have comma arrow Ooh. make sure you can see what i'm typing so the x value is arrow l arrow l times np dot cosine np dot cosine of my angle and then comma and then what do I need? I need arrow length times np dot sine of my angle. And if for some crazy reason you're jumping into this and haven't seen lesson number 12, you better go back and watch lesson number 12 so you can understand what I'm doing. So that this is the X value of that point. This is the Y value of that point. And then because we're staying in that plane, the Z is going to be zero. All right. Now, remember when we do that, it's going to goof up the size. It's going to goof up the length of the arrow. So I need to fix that by saying P arrow dot length is equal to arrow length and so that'll make sure at this point that everything is right so this if i'm thinking right should start at the x-axis and should just spin around and then start again so it should just keep going let's try that that my friend is not good let's see what we did we probably didn't put a rate statement in there anytime you're using V Python in a loop, you need to give it a rate and let's give it a rate of 50. That's just kind of a guess, but let's see how that looks. So we'll kill this, come back. Boom. Okay. <clears throat> let's make sure it goes all the way around. Looking good, looking real good to me. And then I just want to make sure that it goes on another loop without. OK, so that is going to work. So now I've gone around the X, Y plane. Now, I can't remember which order I told you to do it in. But now let's go through the X, Z. So I want to start here and I want to go from X to Z. All right. Well, probably what you know is now to do that, you're going to need another for loop. So I'm going to snag this one. and paste it. Sometimes when you paste, it messes up your indentation, but it should be indented just like that one. Again, my angle is going to go from zero, but this time it's going to go from zero. It's going to be spinning this way from zero to two pi, but it's still going to go from zero to two pi 
a rate of 50, okay? But now, what is staying at zero? What is staying at zero? Y is staying at zero. And now Z is acting like what? Z is acting like Y. So now what I had before for Y, I just move it. I just move it. Okay, so X is still X, but now Y becomes zero and the action is gonna happen in Z. And so that Z is going to be the sign because Z is now acting like Y. Does that make sense? Think about it. If it doesn't make sense, stop and think about it. Let's try that. So before in the earlier one, X was cosine and Y was sine. Well, X is still cosine. Okay, X is still cosine. But what it is, is it is now Z is doing what Y was and Y is doing what Z was. And so these two, these two Y and Z trade position. And then it should just flip around the other axis, right? Could it really be that simple? Let's see. Okay, we not surprised that this works, right? The real action will be when it gets to red, if it starts heading towards blue. When it gets to red, it should head towards blue. Let's see if it works. The tension builds, the tension builds. Boom, look at that. Okay, it spins towards blue and it's gonna go to blue all the way back to red and then it should spin around it should spin around again. When it gets to red, then it should head towards green. Okay, boom, that is working. All right, so we've gone around the XY plane. We've gone around the XZ plane. Now we need to go around the Z, Y plane. Okay, so this time, it's gonna be like the first one, only this time Z is acting like X. Z is gonna act like X and Y is still gonna be Y. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna get that, uh, we're gonna get that first for loop again, right? So it's just like the first for loop. So we'll copy it and paste it. Okay, so it's just like the first for loop, but this time what? Z acts like Z acts like X. So I got to take all of this. Z is going to act like X. So I'm going to take the X and I'm going to move it to Z. All right. And now X is going to act like Z and it's just going to stay at zero, right? because I'm going like this. This is the X direction. I'm going like this. I stay at zero X. Does that make sense? Let's try that. Were any of you guys able to do this? Let me know. Were any of you guys able to do this? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to go around the X, Y plane. When I get back to the red X, when I get back to the red value, the red axis, it should then head towards blue. Okay, now I'm gonna to head towards blue. And now, when it gets to red, it's gone all the way around, so probably what we're gonna see is something ugly. It's gonna jump over to blue. It's gonna jump over to blue. jumps over to blue but then it does go in the right thing okay i think that's ugly and so what i want to do is when i get back to red i want to drive it i want to drive it to the blue and that means on the last one i'm on the last one i'm going to go all the way around the xc plane but then i want to go and not stop at two pi but i want to go pi over two further I want to go pi over two further. 
Does that make sense? Because what I'm doing is I'm spinning around the XZ plane. I'm spinning around the XZ plane. But then when I get back to the start, I want to go pi over 2 further. And that way it can smoothly go through the ZY plane. I hope that makes sense. Watch, this is what I don't like. Watch this. It comes back to the red and then it pops to the blue. I want to drive it over there. And so that is on our second for loop. Okay. On our second for loop, this is the for loop, the second one that is taking me around the XZ plane. And so instead of stopping at, instead of stopping at 2 pi, I want to go an additional pi over 2. So let's see how that would work. So instead of going 2 pi, I want to go 2 pi plus another pi over 2. Well, I need a common denominator. How much is 2 pi? Well, that is 4 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is equal to 5 pi over 2. All right. So if I fix this on my second for loop, instead of going to 2 pi over here, instead on my second for loop, instead of going to 2 pi, I want to go to, what did I say? 5 times pi divided by 2. And that should drive it on over to that other axis so that you don't have that ugly business going on. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, not surprising that's working. We are traversing the x, y plane. When we get to red, we should start driving towards the blue. We're going to get to red and then we're going to drive towards the blue. That's good. Okay, but now when we get back to red, we're not going to stop at red. We're going to drive on past it to blue. And then we can go up and go through. Uh, okay. Now we're going to go to blue. Now we should go up to green. Okay. Now we're going to go to green. But you know what? We're going to have a problem now. Because when it gets to blue, it's going to pop back to red. Right. It's going to pop back to red. Boom. And I don't like that. I want to drive it. I want to drive it back to red. How would I do that? I can't drive it to red in that axis. So I'm going to have to change the direction and I'm going to have to go in the X, Z plane, just like it did there. It's going to be here and I've got to drive it back around. So what I want to do in the X, Z plane, in the X, Z plane, I want to start at pi over 2 and go to 2 pi. All right. And so this is how we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to do that with another for loop. And it's going to be like the X, Z one. And the X, Z one is the X, Z one is the second one, right? That's where we're working with X and we are working with Z. So I need to copy that XZ, that second for loop. I'm going to copy that second for loop because that has the type of motion I want, the right plane. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add it. But now instead of going from zero to five pi over two, right, where did I start? I started here at pi over 2, so I want to go from pi over 2 to 2 pi. And stop and draw a picture if you don't understand this, because you have to understand this. So I'm going to go from uh, np dot pi divided by 2, and I'm going to go from there to 2 pi. 
So I'm going to go from pi over 2 to pi, 2 pi. That should move it back to the x-axis and then smoothly draw the circle. So let's give that a try, see if that works. I think now we're going to have it go around without those crazy. I don't like to have animations that defy <laughs> physics and you can't disappear off of an axis and magically appear somewhere else. So I'm kind of making this thing move in the real world, which you know, simulations don't have to unless you make them act like the real world, which I think is a good practice. Okay, we're going to head towards blue now. Boom, we're heading towards blue. And now we should go all the way past red and then back to blue and then head towards green. Okay, we're going to go back to blue and then we should head towards green. Back to blue, head towards green. And now when we get to blue, we've got to drive back to red, right? And then we'll start the whole thing over. But I don't want to just magically disappear from blue and jump to red. I want to drive back over there. So when I hit blue, I should go on around to red and boom, it is going to work. When it gets to red, then it will head back to green. And I love doing things this way. But what I want you to see is <clears throat> we've learned this axis command, but really the axis command is the X, Y, and Z position of the tip of your vector, right? Your vector doesn't change length, but you've just got X and Y and Z. And to kind of demonstrate that, to kind of demonstrate that, let me see if I can do this. Let me make a, uh, a B radius of equal to, let's just say 0.1. I'm just kind of guessing I'm going to make a ball. Okay. And now I'm going to say uh, my ball is equal to sphere. And that sphere is going to have a radius of, it's going to have a radius of, Always check B radius, B radius, okay. It's going to have a color equal color dot red. And I want to start it right at the tip of the vector where the vector starts. And where did the vector start? The vector started at a position, well, the tip of the vector was at the one zero zero. So I'm going to set position equal to vector one comma zero comma zero. So when this ball is created, the ball will be at the tip of the vector, although it wasn't one, it was out there by arrow length, right? Because my vector is too long. And so it will be out there at arrow length and that will be better parametric design instead of one if I say this is arrow length out there. So that is the position of that little ball. Okay, I'm just going to run it to make sure I end up with a little ball there. A little ball isn't going to be doing anything interesting, but I want to make sure I have a little ball there. There it is. Okay, that's a little too big, I think. I think it's a little too big by about two. So, uh, I'll make this point 0.05. All right, now that's not very interesting. That is not very interesting, is it? I uh, need to check something here real quick because I just forgot a command. Uh, okay, sometimes I don't have all these things memorized. Okay, so now what I want to do is, as I'm pointing this thing around, what I want to do is I want to change my what? I want to change my ball and I want to change its what? Its position. And where do I want to put its position? It's going to be equal to a vector and I want to put it at the tip. I want to put it out there at the tip. Okay. I want to put it at the tip of the arrow. Well, where is the tip of the arrow? It is all of this nonsense, right? It is that vector. In fact, we can just copy that. 
and then put it here. And what is that going to do? It's going to put the ball at the tip of the vector, right? Our spinning vector. All right. So now we need to do that for each one of our for loops. So let me copy this much. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. And then in my next for loop, the second for loop, I'm going to put that. But now I need to make the vector right. And I make the vector right by getting the vector from the P arrow line of this for loop. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So that is what needs to go here. Okay, now I need to do the same thing here. And what this is going to be, this is the third for loop, my ball dot position is equal to, and then I use its arrow vector. So do you see that the direction of this moving arrow its direction is kind of like the same thing as the position of the ball. And I hope this makes sense. And if this doesn't make sense, go back and watch this video again, because this stuff you really, really need to understand. And so here again, my ball dot position is equal to what this vector for the axis is on the arrow. Now, if I'm thinking right now, I should have that little ball just move around and always be at the tip of the vector. But let's see how many crazy mistakes I made. The problem with doing a bunch of copying and pasting like that is, man, if you're making a mistake, you just put it in 50 different places. Boom, look at that little ball. Do you see that? Huh? Do you see that? Look at that. All right. I shouldn't get too excited. I should let it go all the way around because I could have ended up with it in the wrong spot. So let's let that go around. Now it should head towards blue. Okay. Now at blue, it should go all the way around. It should come all the way back to blue. And then it should head towards green. It's going to come all the way around. And now at blue, it should head towards green. It should go all the way around. And when it gets to blue, then it should head back towards red. And it should head back towards red. Boom. Okay, so that's going to work. That looks good. So now, this is the kind of cool thing that I am going to show you. When I make this ball, I'm going to set a magic parameter that you don't know about. But I will show you on this my ball when I create it. My ball, where do I create my ball? Here it is. When I create my ball, I will do another magic, which is... Uh, make trail okay make underscore trail equal to true and what that means is it should leave a trail everywhere the little ball goes wherever the ball goes it should leave a little trail and uh let's try that This should be kind of exciting. Look at that. Boom. And if you think about it, this is like a what? What does this remind you of back from third grade? It's like a protractor, right? If you have a constant radius and you trace out that constant radius, you get a what? You get a circle. And now what's going to happen here? What's going to happen? We're going to head towards blue. Uh-huh. Look at that. You like that? I like it a lot. Okay. And then... When we get back to red, we're going to go back to blue again. We're going to go past red. Now, that's okay. It's just going to retrace where it was. And then it's going to what? It's going to head towards green. Now, if I just told you guys to go do this, you would have never, ever in a million years probably figured it out. But don't you think this is kind of a cool uh, animation that we're doing here? 
And then once we get here, it's going to retrace uh, to go back to red. Once we get to blue, it's going to retrace to go back. Okay, look at that, man. That is pretty slick. Okay, I just can't help myself. You know, there's just certain things that I have to keep trying. Let's try one other thing here because I want you to learn that you can also do a trail color. And so let's come up here and let's go. Uh, where did I create that thing? There it is. Make trail true. Then we can create a trail underscore color. A trail underscore color is equal to color dot. Let's make it cyan. All right. Let's see how that looks. Uh, maybe I will make it magenta. Yeah. What do you think? What color would be good? I think that I'm going to make it orange because we haven't used orange. All right. All right. So let's see what happens here with an orange trail. Kill the old one and run it. I kind of like that because it matches the vector itself. So that looks pretty neat. I think I'm going to like that. Okay, guys, time for the homework for next week. I've had a lot of fun with this, but it's time for you guys to get a homework. So what I want you to do is I want you to make a clock face. You don't have to put the numbers on it, but you have to put the tick marks on it. Okay, so what you're going to have is you're going to have to create a clock face. The face is round and then it has little tick marks and I should say an analog clock for you digital guys that don't know how to read an analog clock. You're going to have an analog clock and it's got to have tick marks around the edge. All right. So you're going to have to put tick marks and there's like you go. What do you have? You have like 12 o'clock. You have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. 50, 55, 60 is back up. So there should be those major tick marks at every five. And then there should be minor tick marks in between that. So you're going to go little one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you should have a total of 60 tick marks, but every fifth one should be larger. It should be a major tick mark. Okay. Guys, you think you can do that? You got to make a clock face. All right. You got to make a clock face. You don't have to put hands on it or anything, but I want you to start getting oriented in three dimensions. And I want you to start seeing how you can use Visual Python to actually make something that looks like a clock face. Okay, guys, I've had a lot of fun with this. I hope you have. If you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure when you do ring that bell so you'll get notifications of my future lessons coming out. And then also share this on your social media. Get some more people coding because the world needs more coders and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.